All right, guys, we're back on the water today. Um, hopefully, we're gonna catch us some good fish today. Heard some good reports that they started catching kingfish, you know, out on some of the near shore live bottoms. And uh, of course, cobia are still around, so hopefully, we'll catch some kingfish, cobia. Maybe check some shrimp boats. Maybe check the jetties. You know, we're just gonna hit a bunch of spots and see what we can find. Well, we had a big cobia, but it ended up being a two hundred pound shark. It's a good little ways north. We're up here north of the sound. I think we uh, finally uh, see some or Chad uh, caught some up here. I just heard one uh, flip. I'm starting to mark them. As soon as you see them pop. Uh, we went past a few, but yeah. Just to your right. Problem is they're kind of scattered. It's a little windy in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, we got some bait and now we're heading out. We hear good reports of kingfish biting, which is kind of earlier than we expected. Seems like they usually come a little later. After we loaded up on bait, we head north to a spot called Nassau Bottom. Nassau Bottom is a live bottom uh, just off of Nassau Sound, <laughs> go figure. And it's a really good place. We've caught good kingfish here before. It's not like an artificial wreck. It's a, just a good live bottom. It's a big area and we've done really well here. First fish on. Real authority bite on him. Oh. <laughs> it's sick, right? Yeah. And we fish for about an hour and we only catch one kingfish. A little slower than the reports we've been hearing. So we decided, hey, it's early in the season. Let's uh, see what's going on elsewhere. You know, kind of systematically hit different spots to get a good picture of what's going on offshore. So we head up to some spots that are a little further north. This is an artificial wreck. We've heard good things in this area. A couple guys were up there already and they were doing well. We get started trolling again. We get up there and the fish are biting really well. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah. We'll get with that. Yeah, probably that one. Yeah, I can see him. Uh, I can't tell what it is, but... Fishing on the downrigger. Dang. Yeah, you got him. I'm still. Still a little tired from the last one. Dang. Yeah. Okay. First one on our downrigger. Yeah. Another one on the downrigger? Yeah, I'll just 35. Nah. I'll sit back and I see it go like this. Yeah. 
Yeah, I watched it. It just bent over and um, still back here. This line's still out, so. Uh, That's a long line. Is it okay, or you pull it in? I think it's okay. Just just making sure you're aware uh, where it's at. That seemed like a pretty solid fish too, Joe. Yeah, the first few were on that outrigger from that. Uh -oh. We decided this was not a good place to be. Yeah. Straight behind us or what? Uh, pretty much. I think he's going over that that blue one. This one here? Yeah. You want know, to bring that down just till I get over it? This way? Yeah. yeah. I can get that away. I'm okay. Which way is he at? Kind of going the other way. Look at that. You want to come over uh -oh. here where I was at? Dang. Um, biting pretty good. I got some, uh, some I can give you. I got color. There we go. Catch and release. It was pretty action packed. You know, they were hitting our pogies on our kingfish rigs and it didn't take us long for my dad and myself to each get two kingfish. In Florida, that's what the limit is, two fish per person per day. Once we caught those fish, you know, the bite was still going on. It was still early in the day. We're like, well, hey, let's, let's get some practice in, have a little fun, see what else we can find in the area. And we decide let's uh, let's make it interesting, right? We put out an ultralight spinning rod to see if we could catch a kingfish on that. See how it did, you know? Don't normally fish with spinning tackle, especially that small for kingfish. We put it out, and it didn't take long for us to get a hit on it. Get on it. Yeah. Ultralight. Ultralight. Well, we got something on the ultralight. We got him close before we decided to run. Kingfish on ultralight tackle. There he is. Get him inside of that bowler. <laughs> Here we try to try to do some new uh, testing, right? See, see how uh, light we can catch them on. Today we're using some spinning tackle. Off he goes again. Yeah. Not quite a deep perfect rod, but not bad, huh? Yeah. Fighting kingfish on spinning tackle, especially ultralight, is pretty cool. Okay, it's it's different. Um, you know, we fight kingfish with a light drag and you know relatively light tackle, usually 20 pound or maybe 15, and small hooks. But when you're on a really ultralight spinning reel. Uh, you got to be even more, you know, sensitive, a little more finesse to your fighting, okay? You're not jerking the fish, you're not horsing them in, you're just um, kind of guiding them back to the boat. The boat driver uh, has to pay a little more attention and stay right on top of that fish. You know, you want to chase the fish more. You don't ever want slack in your line, don't get me wrong. You're not going so fast that you can't keep the line tight but you do want to stay on that fish so you're not you know getting too much line out there you're limited on line it's a lighter line so you know when you got more line out you know there's resistance on all that line you know if the fish turns they can really put some pressure on it we put that rod back out you know to see what we could do next see if my dad could catch a fish on it as well and that's when things really got interesting something hit that bait and um it didn't take us long to realize that whatever took this bait was big. Running again? Yeah. Nah. Yeah.
So finally we're like, you know, I'd switched out with my dad, tried to fight it for a while, and we're like, you know what, we're not gaining nothing on this. You know, we could be out here all day. Let's try to put a little more pressure on them, and either we're gonna catch this fish or we're not, and we're gonna try to catch more fish. And it turns out he bent the hook. Whatever this fish was, couldn't do nothing with them on that ultralight tackle. Ah, here we go. Dang, he might have. Yeah, I think that was a big shark. Not too bad, but I mean, it's well above the leader, which is pretty long. It's kind of neat because, you know, when a big fish breaks you off, well, he can be anything, right? Blue marlin, blue fin tuna, make it good, you know? No one can prove you wrong, right? You know. Have you got any big uh, amberjack or um, bonita out here? I haven't yet. Caught a small jack earlier. He's 27 inches. Gotcha. We just had something earlier that was just took a ton of line, and we fought it for a while, and it finally bent the hooks. I'm not sure if it was something like that or what. Yeah, I just saw a big sandbar shark swimming on top of the water. I got a fish on. Sounds good. Good luck. We get back to fishing, get back in the area, and bite's still going well. And it wasn't long before something big hit another one of our rods. This time it was on an old school Penn International 20. Uh, 20 pound line, which is still light, but bigger than that ultralight tackle. Same spot. Yeah, here you go. There you go. Um, yeah, if you want, you can bring that one from up. I right, made another little run. It's up front. He was just charging the boat. There he goes. Now he's running again. Dang, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, he's still kind of running. He's moving a little bit. Yeah. We can never get him to, to turn. You know, sometimes you think he was coming up and he just take back off. I mean, it's not, it's not out of the question it could be a cubby either. It's a big old bruiser, you know? No, I mean, I'm not gaining much. Still staying high though, ain't it? Seems to be. Getting some back? Not much. Seriously? Seriously. Faster? Yeah, a little bit. Are you taking any line or just kind of hanging in there? I think he's just swimming about our pace. You know? I'm not sure. It might have. And finally, this fish also pulled loose. There's something big in this area. We just want to know what at this point. My dad gets another fish on, and this uh, fighting like a kingfish, but he pulls off unusually quick. It's kind of weird. Like, dang, he must have uh, never got hooked well or something. But then we look back and we see this huge hammerhead in the back of our spread. Early release. Look, look, look. Whoa! Look at that shark! Wow! Get your, get your camera. Is that my fish? You ate? It probably be. Probably just grab that fish. Oh, look, look, I see his fin. Look, take the shark out, guys. You got the big one? Yeah. Hammerhead. Big old hammerhead. Anyway, I think he got my fish. Bam. Yeah. He'd taken my dad's fish. I guess he just bit. The hammerhead saw an opportunity. Boom. Took our fish. Apparently, there are some big sharks in the area. 
That's what he got with my fish. So maybe it was that shark that had our baits the other time. There's all kinds of big stuff. I mean, people see great whites off our coast. They tagged and caught great whites just off the jetties. You never know offshore. That's one of the things that's so exciting about it. But anyways, thanks for watching our video. Hope you guys learned some stuff from you know what we showed you today. If you got any questions about your kingfish setup, comment below, let us know. Also, find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, catch up with us there. We post some uh, more reports, you know, kind of what we do as we do it. So a little more up-to-date information. I know I got a lot of people following me on YouTube, but check me out on Instagram as well. Give me a shout out. Love to say hi or tag us or something like that. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.